Hey guys, Alex here from Gamer Reaction, and uh, I want to give you guys a quick review of the Xbox Live Arcade game, Comic Jumper. Um, first off, it's by Twisted Pixel. They made The Maw and Splosion Man, which are both uh, good games. The game is 1,200 Microsoft points, and it's available now. Um, so I just played and beat it. Uh, it took me about six hours, um, and it was good. It was, uh, it was not bad. It was, it was a, a decent game. You know, like I just gave you like three totally different... Anyway. Damn it, I have a level 50 epic quest tonight, so let's get this show on the road! So what it is, is it's hard, it's, it's a little hard to categorize as far as game styles, because it's got a, it's got a handful of different ones. It's predominantly a side-scroller, but um, it, uh, it, it will oftentimes switch to kind of like a, a gallery shooter, where you've got a targeting reticle and you've got to shoot these you know, things up there on the screen, and then there are uh, chase scenes both in 2D and 3D, um, and there's sections where um, there's a context-sensitive sequences, so you have to hit the buttons at the right time, and there's uh, flying, like, space-shooty type scenes uh, similar to something like R-Type. The basic premise of the game is that you play as Captain Smiley, and you are a superhero that's kind of on the flop, and you've got uh, the star emblem on your chest, named Star, who speaks, and he's a complete asshole, and he thinks you're a loser, and is constantly reminding you of that fact. You really like Brad. You really like suck. So you begin the game in your comic book, and you, you know, gotta stop the bank from being, from blowing up, and you're, you're facing your uh, enemy, Dr. Winklemeyer, who's a complete moron, and... Or at least he sounds like a complete moron. He's just insane. Give me a moment while we warm this bad boy up. Oh yeah, he's working now. Oh Christ, this guy's an even bigger turd than you are. Just put a bullet in his face. Well, if it isn't our evil arch nemesis, Brad. Wait, what? Uh, Brad's here? What's up, Dill Holes? Um, Brad's a big, muscly douchebag, and, you know, you beat him, but the end of the comic is so, like, lackluster and pathetic that your comic gets cancelled, and you then have to, in order to regain your own comic book, you have to earn money by making guest appearances in other comic books. The genre changes from comic to comic. Uh, the first one is Nanok the Obliviator, which is a fantasy-based... Um, it's, it's a very obvious, you know, homage to Conan, um, and, uh, and so your appearance will change to reflect that. You go in there, and you've got, like, a helmet with horns and these, like, tiger shoulder pads and a broadsword and stuff, um, and the art style changes as well. It's very brown and, and, you know, whatever. And then the second one is the Improbable Paper Pals, which is a Silver Age, uh, comic book from the 60s. So you go back and the art style again is is different to reflect that. You've got this like space suit, this very futuristic, uh, you know, or what the 60s vision of the future was. Uh, a lot of the jokes in it, in that, you know, that genre are, you know, based around the conservative nature of the 60s. Great, a museum. I hate these places. You are in violation of the COC's general standards regarding coarse or vulgar language. A fine will be deducted from your pay. Further violations will result in larger fines and may result in loss of the COC's seal of approval. The f is that? And then the third one is totally different, and that's because it's a manga. You play from right to left, because that's how mangas are read, so you play the game that way. Also, it's all in black and white, and you kind of look like Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. So the gameplay is, is for the most part, it's pretty good. Um, there are definitely parts where it, get, it gets a little, like, unfair. Uh, like, when you first go into Nanok, the, the fantasy one, it's, it's kind of difficult to see your enemies sometimes because they're brownish colored and the background is brownish colored. And so it's kind of hard. I don't know. I got, I got killed a few times from just not being able to see my enemies or the projectiles. Um, and the same can be said for the manga stages as well. It's all black and white. Well, so are your enemies' projectiles and your enemies themselves. So it's, while the art style is cool, it is kind of, it's kind of obnoxious 
you know, at, at times. Overall, the difficulty wasn't so bad. And when you do die, uh, there's a nice uh, nod to Mega Man. When you die, you explode in these power balls, and, and uh, Captain Smiley admonishes you for being a loser. Like, he'll say, oh, you're a loser, loser, loser. Or, you know, I hope your friends weren't watching, you know, or whatever. And that, that's actually one of the great things. Actually, probably the best thing about the game is not the gameplay or the story or anything like that. It's actually the dialogue. Hey, what the... Awesome! I hate to say it, but you almost look cool. Oh, check out these boots! What? Where? Oh, God, let me see! No, I said boots. Oh. Outlander, there you are. Now those are some boots! Um... But the, the dialogue is great. There's a lot of um, fourth wall breaking in that uh, Twisted Pixel is in the game. Like, the developers are actually in the game. Oh, hey, you're doing a great job, by the way. And uh, thank you so much for all this. Very, very much appreciated. Seriously. Not a problem, Captain. I can't believe you people hired this guy. What, was Mollusk Man too expensive? And it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I like that. They, I've never seen a company so shamelessly plug themselves in their product, as Twisted Pixel did in this game, and I don't see that as a negative. I think it's hilarious. There's, uh, you know, in, in a lot of games, there's a power-up that'll, um, you know, eliminate all the enemies on the screen. Well, the same can be said of this one. It's, um, it's a help me, and what happens is you, you push Y when you've got one in your inventory, I guess, and, um, and all these, it's very, like, Monty Python-esque, where all these real hands and arms and feet and stuff will come into the screen and, like, punch the screen and punch your enemies, and then one of the developers uh, with a big grizzly beard, his head will pop up, he'll turn to the camera and smile, and then, like, everybody dies. A lot of the jokes are, you know, pretty obvious and juvenile. I mean, the, the idea behind the game is, I think the idea is great, and it falls a little short of, you know, maybe its potential, but um, I think, by and large, it's... It's it's a decent it's a decent game. I enjoyed my time with it. Would I recommend it to others? Yes, if you've got the points, um, or you are really intrigued by the uh, by any you know by the dialogue or the or the gameplay or something, or it looks like something that's really up your alley, just get it. Don't don't listen to me or other people. Um, I've read uh, a couple reviews of the game right now where people just didn't appreciate it for uh, for what it was. I think um, you know, and I think that's going to be the case for a lot of people. Is they're going to say you know, oh well, it could have done this or it could have done that. Well, it didn't. It did what it did. So you know, just try and appreciate it for for what it did do. Yeah. So, with that in mind, make your own decision. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex from Gamer Reaction, and we'll see you guys next time.